If your cat is coughing, he or she may have feline asthma. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to be showing you the five top remedies that you can be using at home. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. If you yet to do so, I encourage you to click down there to subscribe to my channel, click beside it to sign up for notifications. And lastly, I encourage you to check out my new inner circle where I'm doing weekly Q&A live streams. Asthma in cats is, appears to be somewhat similar to asthma in people in that you have the airways reacting likely to some type of airborne allergen more often than not causing this airway constriction, making it producing signs of the rattling, the wheezing, the coughing, and, and it can be making it difficult to breathe. The more common clinical presentation in veterinary practice is a pet owner such as yourself ringing in your cat who's had a history of coughing. You may have suspected he's almost sort of coughing and wheezing, it seems to often be progressing. You may have suspected it to be something like a hairball. You might have even tried to treat your cat for a hairball. So you've given, given something like Phylaxin, one of the you know, um, Vaseline-based laxatives or something, and it's not getting better. These guys are coughing away. You know, they're trying to bring something up. At least that's what it looks like, and nothing is coming up. So in that instance, what's happening is you've got all this inflammation in the airways, and you can imagine this inflammatory debris is triggering the coughing. So the first thing is getting a diagnosis. You know, you've got a cat that's been progressively coughing and perhaps you've even started to change. We're, we're seeing difficulty breathing and he's maybe even had these labored breaths. Go and see your veterinarian and get a confirmatory diagnosis. Up there is something similar your veterinarian may see on an x-ray and they're going to see the airways quite visible. There are things called, they almost look like railway tracks or these end on airways known as donuts. And that just show, consistent with this marked inflammation, it's highlighting the air, small airways within the lungs and very consistent with asthma. In most cases, um, your veterinarian is going to diagnose asthma and get your cat on to some type of corticosteroid, um, meaning something like prednisone or maybe something orally. They may be giving your cat something injectable. Yes, the steroids can be very effective at decreasing inflammation within the airways, you know, releasing, relieving the signs and symptoms of asthma, making it easier for your cat to breathe. Um, but they're also associated with things such as immunosuppression, you know, secondary multi-organ toxicity, um, secondary diseases such as diabetes. So first I want to stress that if your cat has breathing distress, you know, he's going to need to be on some type of anti-inflammatory initially, maybe a, a steroid. Because we've got to relieve that dramatic inflammation, you've got to make it easier for him or her to breathe at first. But then start to consider, and while they're in a period of a bit of a relapse, and it's not so serious, start to look at some of these home remedies. First, I want to have you look at diet. Um, there's some thought around a correlation between things in your cat's diet that may be triggering this uh, underlying allergic tripe inflammatory reaction. So I want you to be feeding less carbohydrates. Oh, Murray, Murray's like taking away my props. He's eating them. <laughs> so less of these, this actually is just dog kibble here for example, and more of this, primarily an animal-based protein. Yum, Murray. Second, consider modifying your cat's environment so there are just less airborne type allergens that could be triggering your, your cat causing the asthma in the first place. So think about things such as this, you know, cat litter. You know, for instance, I'm surprised when I shake this cat litter, just how much, and you can see it, look at all the dust that comes out, crazy. Less of the aerosol sprays, really make the switch to stuff that is non-toxic especially. Um, even less of those, you know, topical flea and tick insecticides, ideally avoiding them at all. Anything that's going to be airborne, aerosolized, that can trigger your cat's airway. And Third, consider an alternative to the corticosteroids. One study I recently read found marked success when they were using this. 
95% curcumin. Um, this was in people. They were looking at doses there of about 1,000 milligrams or one gram per day. Um, with our animals, we're looking at pretty standard doses of 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. It's important that it's given with food. Um, in many cases with people, it's given with ground black pepper because that aids in the absorption. Fourth, make sure you're adding in additional essential fatty acids, um, primarily in the form of fish oil. We know that it's very beneficial for being anti-inflammatory, decreasing the level of inflammation in an array of different body systems, but in particular with our cats that have asthma and inflammation within those airways. When we're looking at doses, we're looking at somewhere between 500 to 1,000 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. So I want to try Maria with the fish oil. Let's just see if we bust it open and drizzle it on his food. Let's see if he's going to eat it or not. That is the big question. Okay, Murray, make me look good. Oh, Murray likes it. Good sign. Then the last remedy I want to discuss is the use of this. It's honey. It works really well for any of our animals that are coughing. Um, we're looking at sort of doses of about a half a teaspoon for 10 pounds of body weight once or twice daily. And um, often I'll just dilute it with a little bit of water, mix, mix it in, occasionally add three or four drops of lemon, but just honey itself, because we know it specifically will help coat the throat. Secondarily, it's antibacterial. Um, it seems to help relieve some of that secondary inflammatory changes with whatever is going on. So it's gonna give your cat some symptomatic relief, um, but also it may actually help as far as there's any underlying allergic basis. Because what we know is that honey, especially local unpasteurized honey, can contain some of the local pollens. It can help sort of desensitize your cat's airway. So if you wanted to try the honey, you'd be looking at about a quarter to half a teaspoon per 10 pounds of body weight once or twice daily. You could just sort of mix it or drizzle it into your cat's food. Thank you guys so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. I'd love for you to click down there to subscribe to my channel, click beside it to sign up for notifications. And lastly, I'd love for you to sign up for my, new my newsletter. You can do that by clicking the link further in the box below. And also you have to click somewhere to like this video. Give Murray a thumbs up. The last time we did a video, it didn't turn out so well.